Uh, so I've been an artist for 30 years. Uh, my background's in traditional media, uh, painting and drawing, primarily. Um, and in my early career, uh, I used painting and traditional printmaking techniques um, to do geometric abstraction. Um, I used architecture uh, for inspiration to explore form and color. And over time, my work became uh, increasingly more digital. Uh, I started using Photoshop and Illustrator uh, to create digital prints of my work. Um, and so this series that you see in the picture in the back, this is from an exhibition I had in Phoenix where I'm based uh, called Location Series. In 2009, uh, I started exploring uh, generative techniques. Um, I wanted to incorporate randomness um, and chance into my work. Uh, so I taught myself processing uh, and used it to create systems uh, for creating my artwork. Uh, and I started working in larger, uh, more iterative series. Um, so my process at this time was to develop algorithms um, and then convert those into prints. Um, what we see up on the screens here, this is a project called Facades. Um, and is for, again, for an exhibition I had in Phoenix. Um, so I thought of myself as a generative printmaker uh, for about 10 years uh, until I discovered NFTs in 2019. And so that brings me to my first uh, artistic transformation um, that I want to discuss today. Digital ownership. So I've been using digital tools since the 1990s, um, but I, they always had a physical manifestation, prints for the most part. Um, so my process was to create algorithms to create prints. But in 2019, uh, I discovered NFTs uh, through super rare uh, and known origin. Uh, I sort of knew what Bitcoin was, but not really. And I really had no sense of the broader crypto ecosystem or blockchains. Um, but I was intrigued by the idea of uh, my art remaining in a digital format and that there was an online market uh, for buying and selling works in the digital format. Uh, so I bought $40 uh, worth of ETH, uh, did my first mints on super rare. And they were largely just initial experiments to just figure out the mechanics. Um, I ran extensions of existing algorithms that I had from other projects. And so that's kind of what we see up here. Some more facades over here. These maybe look familiar. Constructions, uh, logos, and stacks. Those are the name of these projects. Um, I had some initial sales. Uh, Mattia, if you're around, uh, he was my first collector on Super Rare. Um, yep. And I reinvested that into more mints. And so then in 2020, I decided to go kind of all in uh, with my uh, NFT journey and my first dedicated NFT project. Uh, it was called Abstract Tokens, uh, and it was a generative series of 60 unique artworks. And so these are a subset of those. Um, and because of the limits that were on uh, a lot of the platforms at the time and the fact that I was minting these one at a time, it took me about six weeks um, to get this whole project out. Um, I became very active on Twitter, uh, started engaging with the crypto community, uh, and eventually sold out this project, sold 60 NFTs. Um, and so this initial success really uh, confirmed uh, my intuition that there was something special here. Uh, and it was definitely a frontier that I wanted to continue to explore um, as an artist. So I followed that up with my next project on Super Rare called Jazz Tokens. It was a series of 24 uh, unique outputs. And what I was realizing at the time um, that NFTs were reducing a lot of the constraints um, around my artwork. Uh, I no longer had to deal with physical materials or uh, deal with space limitations. Um, and so I was able to think in new ways about the scope um, about what I was doing. So instead of 10 works that would fit in the space of a gallery, why not 20 or 40 or 60 artworks? Um, and then plus there was this amazing community of collectors that was uh, responding to the work that I was doing, something that really hadn't happened too much in my previous career, um, and that was interested in collecting it in this digital format. Um, so my exploration of NFTs through what were essentially uh, one of one platforms as a generative artist uh, paved the way for my next uh, artistic transformation I want to talk about which is on-demand generation. So my process, as I described, I would write algorithms, select outputs from that algorithm, and then I would mint them individually on these platforms. But it seemed like uh, in this digital world, there might be a better way to do generative NFTs. Uh, enter our blocks. Uh, in September of 2020, uh, Eric Calderon uh, reached out to me about this platform uh, that he was working on. Uh, he had discovered my work on Super Rare uh, and some of, some of the things I was showing before. 
and asked if I wanted to participate um, as an artist. Uh, and I was intrigued by his description of the platform. I kind of uh, envisioned it as a vending machine for generative art. Um, so I started working on a project, and in November of 2020, uh, we launched Art Blocks with the first three projects, uh, Eric's Chromie Squiggle, uh, his brother Danny's Genesis, and then my project, Construction Tokens, uh, which was a series of 500 uh, unique outputs. Um, after the release, I was just kind of blown away by the possibilities uh, that this opened up for me as an artist, uh, being a generative artist. and uh, so. Uh, I joined Eric at the beginning of 2021 to help grow the platform and share this opportunity with other artists. Uh, I continued working on platform as an artist as well. Uh, this is my project, Color Study. Um, and the idea of uh, on-demand generation, uh, which is how uh, Artblocks works, started to open up new ways of thinking. Uh, instead of curating individual outputs and minting them, uh, I would put the entire algorithm of my work online, and collectors could come mint at will. Um, and so this allows for even larger uh, series of work, what Tyler Hobbs has dubbed long-form uh, generative art. Uh, for instance, so this project, Color Study, was a series of 2,000 uh, unique generative outputs. And it also forced me to be more precise with my algorithm development, because uh, everything that comes out counts. Um, so everything that's produced as an artwork has to be good and something that you want to keep. So this is another project, uh, also from 2021. This is called Rhythm. Uh, it's a series of 333 uh, unique outputs. And so another uh, interesting result of working with on-demand generation um, is there, uh, there's this moment of shared creation uh, that happens. So this art uh, did not exist until the minter chose to collect it, purchase it. Um, and so the outputs are a surprise for both the artist and the collector. Um, they are experiencing the creation of the artwork at the same time, um, which is pretty powerful stuff. So it adds a sense of discovery um, to the artwork. Um, but this um, on-demand uh, exploration that I was going through with Artblocks was happening uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and so it was uh, relegated to an online experience, um, this shared creation. Um, and so this, uh, this sets the stage for the next artistic transformation I want to talk about digital exhibition. So my NFT experience to this point has been entirely online, and so my art releases and engagement with the community is happening through the web and social media. And then along comes Bright Moments. In April 2021, uh, Seth Goldstein uh, DM'd me on Twitter, uh, yeah, and said he was opening an NFT gallery <laughs> in Venice Beach uh, called Bright Moments. Uh, the timing was perfect for me. Um, I was craving kind of the social experience that I used to have around my art, uh, putting art on the walls, having an opening reception, interacting with people. Um, and vac vaccinations were starting to allow this to happen again. Uh, so I launched uh, the gallery in Venice uh, with my project Portal. Um, and I don't think we knew it at the time, but it was really the start of something special. Um, it led to Bright Moments events in eight other international cities. Um, and I had the lucky privilege to participate in every one of those cities along the way. Um, and so this project is called Reflection. It's my project from New York City, which was the city immediately following the Venice Beach um, exhibition. Next was Berlin. Um, so this is my project Inflection. Uh, we took over craft work and filled it with these artworks. And then from there, we went on to London, Mexico City, Tokyo, Buenos Aires, Paris, and Venice, Italy. Uh, all in all, uh, it was a three-year journey of digital exhibitions. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about Brian Moments, uh, they're screening their documentary here uh, at 7.15, so definitely come back from that. But really, their, the special sauce uh, was combining this idea of on-demand generation with live events. And so they still had this element of shared creation, uh, but you were literally standing side by side, artist and collector watching the work come to life on a screen. Um, so as an artist, it forces you to consider the live experience of your artwork and also the context of the location where you're showing it as well. Uh, so my work changed again. Um, I started exploring animated or time-based work, things that would evolve over time. Um, this project here is called Culmination. It was for uh, Paris Bright Moments. And this, the cube here has been running my contribution to the uh, Venice Biennale, or Venice Biennale, Finale project. Um, 
And what this is, is now it's live code running in a browser uh, on a digital display, all packaged in an NFT. And so as a code-based artist, it, we're now exhibiting my artwork in its natively digital state. Um, and over this period, uh, I was doing a lot of traveling uh, with Bright Moments, but also with uh, Artblocks and developed a lot of new relationships. Um, and that leads me to my most recent uh, artistic uh, transformation. <laughs> collaboration. Uh, so collaboration uh, for me is not a result necessarily of uh, NFT technology like some of the other transformations were, but it's really a result of my NFT journey to this point. Um, it's just really opened a lot of doors for me and presented new opportunities. So in the second half of last year, uh, I worked on two different collaborations. Uh, the first is with a Dutch art studio uh, called Drift. Um, they're well known for their large-scale kinetic sculptures uh, and drone performances. Um, and this project's called Schema, and it's based on one of their installations called Meadow, uh, which is an upside-down landscape of mechanical flowers uh, that open and close in rhythm. Uh, so Schema is a generative set of animated diagrams for possible meadow installations. That's what's up on screen here. Yeah, and the way we worked is we literally passed the code base back and forth between our studios. Um, I would focus on the color and the composition of the work, um, and they were focusing on the movement and the flower geometry. And so we went back and forth until uh, we came, the project reached its final state. Uh, after that, uh, I did a tra uh, collaboration with Trem. Uh, Isma and Isma is the founder of Tren and my colleague Roxy from uh, Artblocks. They'll be speaking here tomorrow morning, so come for that. Uh, but Trem is known for merging generative art with traditional craft. Um, in talking with Isma, we decided to do a project uh, using stained glass, and that, that would be a great fit for my interest in light and color as an artist. Uh, we partnered with the stained glass studio Atelier Loire in France, uh, who are well known for their uh, historic restorations of cathedrals. Um, I, visit, I had the opportunity to visit last fall to learn about the stained glass process, and it really influenced the way I approached the digital uh, production of the work. Uh, so the project is called Optimism, and it merges algorithmic art, NFTs, and stained glass. And so we see one of the actual panels uh, back here, and then the NFTs serve as uh, digital specifications for the project. And then this is a little alpha. Uh, nobody's seen this yet. Uh, this is a collab I'm working on with the generative artist Martin Grasser. Uh, it's called In Conversation, and it's a book project about design principles. Uh, we're both developing generative systems uh, that speak to each other visually uh, using a shared language of form and color. And so I'm excited to share more details as we get a little further along. That's uh, just a little teaser. Um, but to end this part, like collaboration is really new territory for me over the last year. Um, I've always worked individually as an artist, and so it's been very exciting. Uh, I've grown and I've learned a lot as an artist. Uh, working with other artists over the last year, and look forward to continuing this mode of operating as part of my creative practice. And so I think with that, uh, my time is up. Uh, thank you all uh, for being here. Thank you. Um, I hope something in my presentation resonates with you, um, and that maybe this helps you. Oh, that's okay. Um, I hope something resonates with you. Um, I'll be around the rest of the day today. I'll be around all day tomorrow, so please find me in chat. Uh, shout out to my wife, Kelly, and son, Ryan, for coming, supporting me. Love you guys. Uh, thanks again. Have a great NFC.